I see Mr. Sergei Kizlitsia, the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine. Well, thank you, Mr. President, um, Excellencies. We commend the United Kingdom for convening this debate and keeping the issue of trafficking in persons uh, in conflict situations on the Council's agenda. We also recognize the contribution that has been made by the Spanish presidency in the discussion of this uh, issue. Ukraine aligns itself with a statement to be delivered later by the European Union, and I personally ally myself with everything that has been said by my Swedish colleague, Minister René. Particularly, I deplore the hypocrisy and lip service that many uh, governments uh, do with respect to the plight of women and girls as major victims of the human trafficking. And I call to abandon this practice and to go straight down to business. The issue of human trafficking has been on the UN radar for decades. However, in recent years, we observe a significant evolution of forms of trafficking in persons, especially in conflict and post-conflict situations. As the deadliest viruses, some forms of the trafficking, mutate to the extent that they are immune from lagging behind actions and mechanisms that are already in place. Trafficking for purposes of sexual exploitation is still the most widespread form, and the majority of these victims are women and girls. That is why we need to think about a more gender-specific, targeted approach in all actions against trafficking. Another aspect of the issue is that persons displaced by conflict, including refugees, can be especially vulnerable to all kinds of exploitation. In this regard, Ukraine fully supports the commitments in the New York Declaration for Refugees and Migrants to com combat human trafficking, including through targeted measures to identify, protect, and assist victims, as well as to prevent human trafficking among those affected by displacement, taking into account the particular vulnerabilities of women and children. Trafficking is a transnational threat that requires a transnational response, including from the Council. It is encouraging that the Council address this issue uh, in its uh, presidential statement in December 2015 and last December adopted Resolution 2331. We must build on this momentum. Both presidential statement and resolution stress that the need to, to ensure the persons who have uh, been trafficked are treated as victims of crime and are not penalized for their compelled involvement in the unlawful activities of the perpetrators. Widespread impunity is unacceptable because the repetition of such crimes creates a vicious circle of delinquency. Along with the provision of the psychological, social, and medical support to victims, we see the fight against impunity as a key priority area. Following on the statement by the Secretary General, I would like to uh, insist that human trafficking should be taken as a threat to international security, at least equal to drugs and arms trafficking. For traffickers, human beings are just a commodity which can be sold for profit. Their channels used today for human trafficking, tomorrow may be used for arms smuggling or transporting terrorists if a greater profit is promised. The international, uh, the international community should therefore unite its efforts to cut these channels, treating them as real danger. Mr. President, the fight against this horrendous phenomenon is on the top of, uh, top of the agenda of the Ukrainian government activities in the field of human rights. In 1998, the International Organization for Migration launched the counter-trafficking program in Ukraine with a view to supporting government and civil society efforts to combat trafficking in human beings and to ensure victims access to assistance and justice. Over the past decade, Ukraine has made a number of important steps towards the establishment of a viable nationwide counter-trafficking response and setting up a government-owned national referral mechanism to identify, assist, and protect victims of trafficking. Ukraine joined the main international legal instruments on fights aimed at fighting human trafficking and as of today has a solid national legal framework to address this disgraceful 
and dangerous phenomenon. Let me note, however, that all of the aforementioned documents currently cannot be properly implemented in non-government controlled areas of Ukraine. As Commissioner Highland stated here today, conflict is the major driver of the modern slavery across the globe. Three years of Russian aggression against Ukraine have led to increased risk of human trafficking in the affected areas. We have already seen numerous cases of human trafficking and forced labor, and even slavery in certain areas of the Donetsk and Lugansk regions outside the control of the government. But these cases remain largely unaddressed due to the lack of both safe access and proper attention of the monitoring missions, especially by the Human Rights Mission of the United Nations, as well as SMM, OECC, OEC, and UNICEF and ICRC. It is therefore important that these international presence in Ukraine include the respective activities in their monitoring work in non-government control areas. We also call on these organizations to provide relevant training to field staff working there and reflect all cases of human rights violations in this area in their regular reporting. The situation is particularly complicated by the 400 kilometer section of the state border with the Russian Federation, which is out of Ukraine's control and widely used for the inflow of weapons, ammunition, and fighters in the, into the zone of conflict. The victims and perpetrators of trafficking in, in persons are also moving across this uncontrolled section of the border. In this regard, we have to be aware that Russia does not have comprehensive mechanisms for effective investigation, prosecution, and punishment of perpetrators according to the Convention Against Trafficking in Human Beings of the Council of Europe. Today, among all member states of the Council of Europe, it is only Russia that has neither signed nor ratified this convention that has been opened for signatures and ratification 12 years ago. Mr. President, trafficking is a blatant violation of human rights, an offense against the dignity and integrity of a person. The success of our common fight against this scourge requires the effort of all concerned. The long-term solution can only raise from consistent political commitment and the joint action of the international community to eradicate human trafficking, to promote justice and accountability, and to protect victims. And I thank you.